ready like Friday night spaghetti. No spaghetti here, though. You're tuned into that Three Wheel Bicycle podcast coming out of Casper, Wyoming. First up to the plate, I am your host, Stevie V. Next to me, Josh. And, and right next to him is Jake Cracker. And we got a returning guest. It's me, Art. He's in the studio this time, not over, I don't know if you'd call it the landline, a cord of some sort. Yeah, yeah, I was using the cell phone, but I get it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're tuned into Three Wheel Bicycle Podcast. We're here to put a shiver in your liver, baby. And a poo in your pool. Coming from that cowboy state. Yeah. I don't have a cowboy hat on, though. See, I get scared when there white people come to my house. Not to give it ain't fair. These white folks are always encroaching. Yeah, I don't trust white people to wear a white beard. I mean, it is a uniform. Do you like fried spaghetti? Can you fry <laughs> spaghetti? Yeah, you I can think, do whatever you want. I think it. that's what's like on top of like a low or chow mein, dude. Like fried noodles. Fried uh, no, that shit's Ooh, different. Yeah. They make that shit out of wheat. Uh, it looks like fried noodles. <laughs> basically it fried does. Noodles. You're right. Right. Well, you know, noodles are made out of wheat, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Touche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two oh, hey, shit. See, hey, it listen, sounds we're gonna, weird. We're gonna cuddle that. up. Look at that. How about that? I'll just talk really loud. Like I've got a terrible voice. For Two like, boys and a microphone. Radio. You got a good radio voice. Like it's. I it's could turn like it down over nasty. here too. Oh for shit! Not. My bad. No, it is your bad. Ooh. It's it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> it's all good. No, the sound people know the lower you have the volume on there, the better this is. Yeah. Well, shit, yeah. Thank you, everybody, that's tuned in on the Facebook Live. That's how you know we're old. It's the Facebook. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, everybody, that is joining us uh, for the Facebook and who is um, letting us invade your ear through whatever podcast platform. Your home and your work. Yeah. In yeah. the gym, maybe for Ooh. a minute or trucking. The yeah. shower. You know, Hopefully, we don't yell "cunt" too loud. <laughs> yeah. I like woo, that. Woo. You know? Cunt's a good word. Cunt is a fabulous word. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for having. Calm me down, guys. guys. Calm. Yes, down. I appreciate um, it. Yeah, um, this is fun as hell, guys. Uh, did we introduce? You met our our studio audience last time, right? I, I did over the phone. Yeah, yeah. And, and I listened, dude. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, you never got to see him face to face. Yeah. They're here. Hi. Yeah. They, sometimes they, they get pretty rowdy. Dude. Sometimes I, they don't. We I put like them the, in the basement if they don't listen. I like the fat guy in the wet T-shirt because you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. it wasn't him that wet it. Like you know, it was just like that's how it, he came. We told him he had to have that yeah. just for you. I love uh, it. Speaking speaking of crowds. Yes. Not, you are. So you are a stand-up comedian. Yes, I am. Um, you've been doing that. For four years, yeah. Yeah, four years I, uh, you know, actually, I, like, I, I started out in grade school. I had this teacher in fifth grade that promised me every Friday I could get up and do 10 minutes in front of the class if I would shut the fuck up the rest of the week. <laughs> Her name was Miss Mortimer. If you're still alive, shout out to you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and then, you know, like, I went through high school and I was always, like, kind of funny and kind of like, but I was also a dick, so, like... People beat me up a lot. <laughs> um, so, but, it, you know, it was just different. And then, you know, one night there was an open mic and my wife was like, no, nah, you're getting up there. And I went up there and did 10 minutes, man. And I did pretty well, you know, just riffing. Yeah. And then wrote some shit down, kept going, kept going, kept going. Uh, started getting booked for shows. Uh, started going down to Colorado, doing open mics down there, doing small shows, you know, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just taking off from there and having fun doing it. Hell, yeah. That's cool, man. So can I ask, so are you um, are you out of Wyoming? Are you out of Colorado? Where are you out of? Well, I would say I'm right out of here at Casper, man. If you're, if you're uh, 
if you've seen a local comedy show, I'm probably part of about 75% of them. Yeah. Um, me or Don Haynes and... Uh, Don was actually putting on that open mic that I first went to. No, you know? shit, shout out to Don. Yeah, shout out to Don. But yeah, no, man, it's fun. It's a good time, dude. I get to, you know, go up there, talk shit. Um, you know, and it's the whole thing is like just saying the right things to get people to like you. Yeah. I've been doing that to bitches my whole life, so <laughs> I figure I could do it to men too. <laughs> the crowd is, thought uh, that was funny too. Is a lot of your a lot of your style is it derived from uh like stories of yours or is a lot of it is a lot of it sounds like some of it at least is uh kind of crowd work. Which one Well, you know, I actually don't do a lot of crowd work. I'd say about five to ten percent of mine is crowd work. Yeah. Um yeah, I do a little bit of crowd work because you definitely want to get people engaged. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I don't want it to be my whole thing. Absolutely. Um, definitely writing is uh, is the best thing because I could write a joke, and I'm adding on to that joke for, like, and that joke is not 100% for, like, six, six seven months. Yeah. Um, just adding, taking away, moving this here, uh, just seeing, you know, what kind of reaction you get. And crowds are different, too. So, I mean, other than that, it's just personal life and shit that happens to me on a daily yeah. yeah. Uh, I do have another question, too. I mean, since you're from here, is there a humongous difference between Wyoming crowds, like your home crowd, I guess is what you might call it, and, like, shows that you've done, whether it's open mic or not, in Colorado? Is there a huge difference? Uh, I would say, yeah. I've uh, been to some open mics that aren't uh, definitely as ready to hear my fucked up Wyoming views. <laughs> uh, they just... Uh, they're not very receptive to some of them. Uh, some of them, you know, a lot of mine's family stuff, so uh, they're definitely receptive to that. But as far as, like, if I want to make a Biden joke or something, it's hit or miss. You know what I mean? The yeah. crowd's either, either behind me or they're not. I did a, a bar in uh, Denver, and uh, half the crowd, well, no, I'd say, like, 75% of the crowd was probably blue. Yeah. And I went up there, you know, talking some shit about drilling. You know, not shit, but talking about, yeah. you know, drilling and stuff like that. And I got a couple jokes. You know, like I was drinking beer and accidentally hit my wife. Uh, you know, oh. stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm joking. Yeah. But yet they uh, they didn't like it. You know what I mean? There's there's some jokes that you can do here that you can't do there. Right. Oh, yeah. Like, right. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I told you about the New York stop that last time. Yes. That was an amazing story. Yeah. So like that, that guy, uh, like New York crowd was definitely more perceptive. Like I thought they were all going to be blue. <laughs> and nah, dude, they were they were hunkered down on all the fucking redneck jokes, dude. They were loving it. <laughs> and you know, I just I don't do I don't I don't have a lot of like Mexican jokes because I grew up white like y'all. Yeah, <laughs> like I grew up right, right here in Wyoming, <laughs> so all my friends were white. I had like one or two Mexican people, and my parents knew their parents type shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We just happened to go to the same school or something. You right. you have a show um, as well. Yeah. With your wife. Yeah, we do the Shark Show on YouTube. Uh, definitely check it out. Uh, I, we also do the Shark Show. Spell that out, bro. It's S-H-A-R-T-S-H-O-W, The Shark Show. Uh, hey, you know, and, yes. and, and, my, and I go on Facebook, I go with Shark. My name is a fucking Shark. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah here, how many people say, what's yeah. up, Shark? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, your fucking name is Shark, shark Delgado. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm just saying, like, do we call you Mr. Shark? <laughs> do we call you Art? Yeah, just just start. Like, my name's Arturo, right? So, like, I just go by Art because I grew up here. All right. Well, <laughs> if we're going to talk about cool names, dude, well, I'm just I saying, don't have one. Well, I'm just saying, dude, Ben is great. You know, like, for you want me to call you Ben? <laughs> yeah, if you wanted to call me Ben, I'd go over. That's like, Art is like the Ben of everything, you know? Now I, I got I, I do have to say this since we're talking about yeah. names. Uh, I was in a band for a little bit, no big deal, and it literally wasn't a big deal. But was it good? we one of our first songs that that we had was called Angry Delgado. What was oh, it about? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was. Listen, I'll be honest. It was early in the in the band's game, and it was the material was there. The talent was not. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I actually, in preparation for the show, because we are known for not being prepared. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel like. Uh, so I, I just did look into it. I was like, well, I 
typed into Google Delgado into English. Like, what does it mean in English? Oh, it means thin. Yeah. 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 And the song was called Angry Delgado. And I'm like, okay. So I basically, and I didn't know that when I wrote the song. Or, <laughs> what, did, what was Delgado part? What was that about? I, it just sounded good. Delgado. It does sound good. Oh, yeah. And basically the whole course was me screaming angry Delgado. <laughs> like that. So an angry thin person, I guess. Which, hey, if you're starving <laughs> to death, you're going to be angry. Yeah, I already have like one of those distended, distended stomachs. Oh, like, yeah, dude. And that's a good look. That's a popular well, like, look coming back. I always like thought, like when I was a little kid, I was watching those. I was like, they're full. Why are, we sending, why, are, why are we sending them down there? And you know what I'm saying? Everybody's like, oh, eat insects. It's like, dude, if it was all about insects, those dudes had probably a pound of flies. Yeah. Exactly. I'm, probably, I'm probably getting canceled for that. But I'm, just, yeah. I'm just saying this was the 80s, okay? Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah, it was. you know what I'm saying? This fat lady got on there and begged for food for yep. skinny African yeah. people. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, she did. That's unchristian. Yeah, it's, it's very. I think she was jacking him. You like that South Park? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Sally Struthers. Yes, that's her name. Yeah, she was jacking their shit, dude. Dude, Sally's out there getting money. She's getting paid regardless. Speaking of uh, jacking people's shit, um... ew, gross, <laughs> <laughs> fucking gross. Like, Let's talk about that one time. I got way too drunk. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, so. The show yes. that you're putting on, yes. um, June 28th. June 28th at Sideline Sports Bar Grill and Venue. Yeah, that's a long fucking name. Yeah, it wow. is. Wow. But no, they're they're uh, they're donating the space for that night. Definitely a shout out to them. Uh, we're helping out for uh, you know trying to repeal Senate File 32, which is the law basically states that uh, THC from hemp can't be over point zero three decarbonized. Whereas before that, it could be zero decarbonized. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then as soon as they carbonize it, then it could be whatever the hell it is, right? That's why you get THCA and get, you know. Well, I'm going to be quite honest with you. My math isn't too (laughs) (laughs) THC-wise. But no, what they do is is they're basically trying to make it to where uh, these small businesses don't make any money. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, it's a big deal how much tax money these guys are putting in. Uh, Forbidden Mm. Leaf has been a great sponsor of, uh, you know, comedy cuisine and anything Delgado Entertainment's putting on. Mm. Uh, But this is, uh, they don't understand. There's like, how many are in town? Like, what, seven? There, there's quite a, a few. Yeah, there's quite a I few, know right? There's yeah. a lot. And I, I think, I, I do have to say, like this, uh, I don't smoke any of it, but my biggest concern is these are local businesses. Yeah. Yep. These are local businesses that we've apparently already said the it's legal and given them the permission to open and pay a bunch of taxes, pay a bunch of money in taxes, and then we're going to say, uh, no. Never mind. Yeah. Right. Well, we made we made your dollar from you, and and now yeah. now that's enough. That's well, fucked up. It's jacking your right. shit. Well, yeah, and what <laughs> Wyoming's doing is basically, you know, they're not stupid. They see how much money it's bringing in. Yeah. It's time to shut these little guys down. Yeah. So then they can make it totally legal, bring in the big guys, and these guys that had a foothold in it no longer have that foothold. Yep. You know what I mean? I could see that. I and guarantee you that's the guy that walks down the alley every every day at 8 o'clock. Is it about that time? It is. Getting pretty close. It is. It's oh, with it's his pit dogs. Bulls. I, I don't. I didn't even hear the dogs till he said something, Stevie. But yeah, no, they're trying. They're basically trying to kill the kill the small guy. Let's bring in the big guy. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the basic thing that politicians line their pockets. Second of all, uh, first of all, it was done by our Senate, right? Our state Senate, who was supposed to represent our us, right? Yeah, right. Um, and this was held with no vote. There was no county vote to go through. This is a, a law uh, that they made up where uh, Senator Mark Gordon just signed it in the law just. Just because not listening to his constituents um, and just going off of, you know, um, what the Senate is. He wants the back of the Senate. Um, right. It's, it's politics at its worst, and it's uh, killing, you know, small business owners, and it's taking away a little more of our freedom. Yeah. Yes, sir, it is. It's the same shit that I've been bitching about yeah. for fucking years now, Steve. <laughs> that bureaucratic bullshit. Bureaucratic bullshit. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, we want to fuck. We want to sit here and say that they they don't give a fuck about you. You're a number. They want your money. They want your tax dollars. That's all they want. They don't give a fuck about you. And matter of fact, like 
really, at the end of the day, if voting mattered, they wouldn't let you do it. Who said that? Mark Twain, I believe it was. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I but if, but they said, he was they said, the smarter people said once upon a time, if voting, if voting mattered, they wouldn't let you fucking do it. All right. And what they're what they're trying to do is they're trying to make more rules and more laws and more regulations, okay, to make it harder and harder for the everyday person to fucking do their thing and help other people, help other people in their community. So that way only the government and their toadies can have a grip on it. Yeah. And then once they fucking tighten that grip, there's no way anybody else can do it. Right? Okay, and we've been... In, Listen, we're, there's no question. I don't think any of us here would question the fact that we, we are nothing but grateful and lucky to be born into America and in the time that we were. But also, we're a little bit cursed with the time that we're growing up in. Yeah. Because as a nation, I think that we are maturing, all right, that we are learning a lot with with all the, the internet and... and Plus, plus people just come and come into the streets with it yeah, and telling us and, and giving us information and they're going to give a little bit and they're going to take it away a little bit more. And then they're going to give you a little bit and they're going to take a little bit more. And then by the, by the end of it, you don't have nothing left. Like there's a, there's a parable. I, I believe it's like, uh, it, it's something along the lines of like the, the, the turtles rights were taken away and nobody said anything. And then the, the, the owl's rights were taken away and nobody said anything. And then the deer's rights were taken away and nobody said anything. And then the human's rights were taken away and nobody said anything. And then when my rights were taken away, there was nobody left to say anything. Mm. Kind of a deal. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's correct. That might be. I, I know I didn't make it up. It's but But that's the fact of the matter is that, you know, if we don't say something now, if we don't stand up and go, Hey motherfuckers, this is what time it is. This is what we want because all, you know what you go to any bureaucrat or any fucking anybody that I don't care if it's somebody that works at the DMV. If you go to them and go, Hey, while your job is important, you are a, you're a civil servant. They don't like that. You go to a cop and say, you know what? You're actually a civil servant. They don't like that. I'm not a servant to anybody. Okay, well, then why am I a fucking paycheck to you? Right. Just a perp. Yes or yes. Yes or yes. Every time I've ever been arrested, they always go, I'll shake it. They don't, and I go to court. They don't say, they go, what's your job? And they don't give a fuck about your job. No matter what your offense is, they don't give a fuck about you. It's just a job. It's not a career. They don't take us seriously. We're just a number. So now's the time, if any, to vote on this shit, to to sign it. Yeah, and what basically what we're doing is they didn't expect uh, the business owners to fight back like they're doing. Uh, so basically what we're doing June 28th is, you know, we're holding a benefit because these damn lawyers are expensive as hell. Oh, I believe it. And, uh, you know, this is just to give a little reprieve to those guys because, I mean, they're putting tens and tens of thousands of dollars per business, you know, to, to fight this and it's a, uh, you know, I totally agree with it, you know, cause I'll tell you what, dude, I've made some dumb mistakes when I'm drinking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the only time I've ever made a dumb mistake when I was on weed was having the weed. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Very true. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's, I had the weed. I got in trouble for the weed. You know what I mean? None of it ever stuck. Thank God. You can look it up. Yeah. <laughs> Public knowledge. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things. It's like it, it you want to regulate it like alcohol? Fine. Sure. Nothing's stopping me from going to a, to a bar, yeah. uh, yeah. go to the grocery store, pick up a 12 pack or whatever. Why can't it be the same way? Only if you want me to go to a special store. Okay. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I go to, I do the same thing for my haircuts. Yep. And, and I want to say that uh, to expand on yours is that, uh, Look at the look at the actual proof of between alcohol and weed, w- which one damages the human body worse? I can promise you this much: it's not more than weed. the human body lives. It's not weed; it's alcohol. Human lives, yeah, human lives. 
I do. Well, and I think a big thing too, I mean, and I hate to be this guy because I think if you, if you want to do whatever you want to do, you should be able to do as long as it's not harming another person yeah. or children. You're, I don't give a fuck. But the thing is, is that guess what? Guess how big of a, of a operation mothers against drunk driving is they're they're in Congress. They have lobbyists and they've had them for a long time. And but it's like if you were if you were that big of a basically a corporation by now, they've been around since what the seventies, eighties. Yeah, if you're that since big of a corporation, a don't you think with the amount of money that you've raised over all the DUIs, you'd be able to outlaw drinking if that's what you were actually concerned about? Ooh, and, and they've made it up. And what they've done too is they they've made it to where if you get to do well, you have to take that mandatory education yep. course, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> and that's held by mad. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. That's yeah. held by and or uh, what's not? It's not that it's a victims impact panel or something like that. You got to go down yep. to the basement, of the library, and hear yeah. a bunch well, of people right out right out of the gate, pay yeah. money to them. Yeah, you, you're, you're, I mean hell, you're paying. But like your first DUI, it's going to cost you a couple grand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not just you know, because not just in fines, you got to take like counseling. Yes, sir. And uh, you Get know, one of them goddamn deals in your ride. Right. Luckily, I got all my DUIs before that. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I, I was had young. one. I can tell you this much, and this is from a very close friend of mine. He got one two years ago. There is. He got. Mostly all the shit hammered to him besides 30 days in jail or 60 days in jail. He did seven. And you want to take a guess on how much it cost him still with a lawyer? Well, on top of the lawyer as well, yeah. I'm going to say. 10 grand. I'm going to say he was about 3,800 with a lawyer. I'm going to throw a 20. I'm gonna 10 say- grand. 13 grand. Ooh, Josh is the winner. Yeah. Yeah, you win a DUI. Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> we all been there. <laughs> a ding, ding, ding. No, I'm just saying, it's like, if, if something's so dangerous, yeah. you know, like alcohol, which it is, it can be. It absolutely can be. And there's no dispute over that. But if there's, there's something mo- like that, and we're going to put all this money into it, and, and all this money goes to Mothers Against Drunk Driving and all this Victims Impact panel, but then we're going to deny something as, number one, as harmless as marijuana and CBD. And and then not only that, but we're going to try and make it illegal. What, what world are we living in? Yeah. Well, let me tell you this right now. Okay, do you guys know what WAS Cop is? Uh-uh. I know RoboCop. Oh, well, this is the Wyoming <laughs> Association of Sheriff and Police. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. and see, what they have done for the last 10 years is they've been the highest contributors to anti-marijuana legislation. In uh, unions! Yeah. Yeah. So what, unions! Yeah, so what it is is basically yeah. they're trying to keep themselves, because, I mean, like, if you took away marijuana, like, I'm not saying to make a big impact of, of, on the crime of our streets and how many cops you'd need, Yeah. but they're afraid of that. Yeah. Because they're yeah. getting, they're getting, you know, I'm saying they're getting five hundred dollars for somebody that has a, a gram in their pocket. Yeah, yeah, you know, which is a little bud, you know, well, and and, and then that guy's got to go to counseling. It's it's a machine. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it absolutely. You and know then what I mean? On top of it, they get paid. They get paid for how many people are in their their jails and prisons. Like, there's no. Yeah. If you go to the even the Natrona County Detention Center, if you go to their website, they won't tell you on their website. They don't tell you the rules. Of like, uh, you know, if you get, if you go in there, you got white t-shirt, you can wear the white t-shirt kind of thing, more or less. I mean, you can't, doesn't matter, but they do give you a number right off the gate as if they're bragging about it. Like Natrona County Correction Center stays at this capacity, this many times of the fucking, this many times of the year or or this often, you know. It's wild that it's a business. It's a business. And there is a fucking, there's a correctional officers union in the United States that lobbies money to Mm. keep people in prison and keep people in jail. And we're just going to keep, all I'm saying is, how about this? All I'm saying is we all remember the war on drugs, right? That started. Guess what happened? More drugs. 
The war on terror. Guess what? Seems like there's more terrorists. You know what I mean? You keep on fucking fronting these. They want you to. It's it's fear, 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 fear. That's all it is. If you keep on buying into it, that's all it's ever going to be. And weed uh, is the least of your fucking problems, my friends. The CCP is shipping all the components to fentanyl down to Mexico and running it. And you think the, you know, it's wild shit. Yeah, like, I don't know. Well, like, I've heard of the Chinese doing that. Um, And they've got, like, you know, they've traced it back money-wise and stuff like that. But Uh basically what what I'm saying is, like, at a local level, it should be handled locally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if Natrona County wants to, you know, because if Natrona County wants to pass a law, they should be able to do that law. Same thing, you know, on a bigger basis, Wyoming. But what I believe is that they shouldn't sign something in the law just because these senators, and yeah, I get it, like, we supposedly voted for them and we put them in. But they're coming up and they're, you know, they're just being dirty. They're not listening to us and what we want at the same time, you know. It's like a 50-50, hey, I needed this money, though, because this is what my campaign next time is going to cost, and I got to make sure I have that. You damn dopers. Right. So, (laughs) yeah, we're going to have a pretty funny lineup. Of course, you know, as always, I'm the host. I'm going to be hosting the show, and we're calling it WAP Comedy Night. And I know what you're thinking. There's not going to be any wet-ass pussy up there. What? Yeah, yeah, I know. A lot of people are going to be disappointed. But what we've come up with is the Wyoming Hemp Awareness Project. Oh, fuck so that. yeah, that's that's what it is. The Wyoming Hemp Awareness Project. So it's the WAP comedy show. W H A P. Yeah, yeah, it's still WAP. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. There's not gonna be Megan the Stallion or some other greasy woman up there showing her wet box. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be telling jokes. We've got the the. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, so we had uh, we have the very funny Ricky Ramos is gonna be headlining. Ooh. Yeah, Ricky Ramos is a funny dude uh, out of Denver, Colorado. Um, of course, been on like you know Channel Nine down there. He runs uh, the first bilingual comedy yes. uh, open mic down there, and he does the first Mexican uh, American Latino comedy festival. But that doesn't mean you can you know you only have to be you know Mexican or Latino to to sign up. Uh, um, just, oh, I can. Just uh, here here's a plug for you. Submissions are open. It's the Vatos Locos Comedy Festival. Uh definitely get into that. If you guys want to perform in front of a bunch of different people, different crowds, it's going to be great. Last year was so much fun. Uh and then we have the very funny uh Joe, I don't know how to say his last name. If I if I murder it, I'm sorry. I think it's Huseman. Oh. Huseman? Joe Huseman. Joe Huseman. That doesn't but it's seem like H U I S M A N. Is that Huseman or Heisman? Who's I'm not sure. Heisman. Huseman. Heisman. 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 Get real angry in the German about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, so yeah, um, we're gonna be running that show. Like I said, it's gonna be the sidelines. They're gonna be offering food. If you want to drink some beer, drink some beer. We're gonna have a sectioned off smoking section. Uh, so definitely before the law goes into effect, come on down. Yeah. It's gonna be a fun time. Um, Where can tell. you get tickets for this? Well, right now they're only available online until Friday. Until okay. they, or no, today's Friday. Sorry, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow's Saturday, so they'll be available. Uh, you can probably pick them up at Forbidden Leaf locations by Sunday. Um, and then, yeah, uh, you'll be able to get some tickets, get on down there, but definitely buy them online. Um, it's going to be a great time. You was talking about a silent auction. Yeah, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to donate for the silent auction, you know, raise as much money as we can because, you know, even if the venue holds 200 people, there are $15 a piece tickets. So, I mean, Mm. we're not going to be putting a huge dent just in that, but, I mean, there's going to be sales going on. We're trying to do a silent auction, so we definitely are, you know, hitting up all the businesses out there that, you know, are trying to save Wyoming's freedoms. Yeah. um, Because it's just a matter of time before they start taking away other shit. I th- I'm gonna I'm gonna donate for the cause, Hell too. Yeah. I'm gonna see what I got laying around. Well, and let's everybody remember that uh, the more there used to be a sign in town, it might still be at Wyoming Bent Night, but the more regulations grow, the more freedoms die. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know about everybody else, but there ain't nothing more worthless than worry about what your neighbor's doing if he ain't hurting yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, and, and we're talking about, come on, come on, 
you can do dope places. You know yeah. what I mean? You Dude, I literally have stuff. I literally, Ain't for a fact, time for that. have neighbors. <laughs> okay. And I live in a halfway decent neighborhood. I got neighbors that I know do meth yeah. for a fact. <laughs> yeah. And I know that because fucking wink, wink, <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And all I'm saying is they mind their own business. I mind mine. Yeah. Dude. Somebody smokes weed, you don't even fucking know. So what the fuck does it matter to you? Like, come on. I think it goes back to the whole mind your business type thing. Yeah. Like that Hank Williams song, you know? Yeah. Mind your fucking business, I think is what he said. (laughs) And also, you know, come on, dude. Are we being children right now? Mm. We're going to be children. What if your neighbor smokes cigarettes and you don't? And you got a newborn baby. And every mm. once in a while, you see your neighbor out front smoking cigarettes. Are, are, is Wyoming the, really the place that we're going to go, especially with the fucking wind? Thank yeah. you, Josh. Yeah, yeah we're going to do that shit. We're going to yeah. cough. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You know what? If you can't handle somebody doing their own thing that's different than yours, grow the fuck up and get the fuck out, yeah. you piece of shit. I don't want you in my neighborhood anyways, yeah. and I won't die for you or your freedoms. You fuck hole. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Like it, you, you, uh, what it is, is like the, it's, you pay more attention and it's like the media and these fucking kids. Like, I don't like, okay. See, when I was a kid, my fucking opinion didn't fucking matter. Mm-hmm. If I didn't like dinner, guess what? I didn't eat fucking dinner. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Our, my, my kids got a motherfucking choice. My wife gives them a choice. Right oh, you don't there. want that? There's some frozen burritos. No, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Nope. There's air to it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, you know that actually like, spit in your mouth? Yeah. Swallow it. It's a, <laughs> but it's a different, yeah. you know, it's a different way of being brought up. You know, and I thought that it was like a Mexican thing. But mm. I got I got I got friends that are raised like that that are white and black, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like no, it's, it's a it's a different kind of parenting thing. Bread and water. Like and I'm not gonna <laughs> say that it definitely worked on me because I've been a fuck up too, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> like I fucked up, I've done my shit. But you know, it I'm, I'm made st- you a better person. Now. Yeah. Hey, you know everybody I mean? that's tuned in anyway. on Facebook Live right now, if you want to listen to the rest of the conversation, it's gonna be up on all those wonderful podcast platforms. We're out of here right now. Well, you just click that link down below. That's a Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Son of a bitch. Yeah, Bye we have Facebook. no fucking boop, boop. Here. So we're still recording that, right? <laughs> All right, <laughs> dude. <laughs> dude. No, but like, uh, yeah, no, I think it's, I, I think the whole fucking thing comes down to like, uh, it's a different kind of parenting, but I think the kids now are a lot softer and a lot dumber yeah. and they want to be badass. Oh, yeah. They definitely they're they're jumping people. They're doing stupid shit. Shit, Casper's gone crazy with dude, fucking it's kids. Fucking retarded. Like when I was a kid, you, you asked me, dude. Like, how old are these guys? Fourteen years old, stabbing each other. Yeah. Hey. That's just wild. Hey. So hey, Josh wants to tie some <laughs> shit. I no, I don't. No, I don't. No, no, we're good. <laughs> just but, say no, but at just the same time, it. inadvertently. Right, right, and, right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's fucking different. Like, the, it it's di- like this wasn't some premeditated shit. Right, I didn't invite right. no motherfucker to the mall, yeah. right, yeah. to stab a motherfucker. Hundred yeah. percent. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't stalk a motherfucking little girl yeah. for three fucking months to right. shoot that. My chick, fucking you know? niece, dude. My niece. That she, was your niece? She, no, no. Oh, no. okay, okay. I I had a niece before all this, but it was, I mean, precursor kind of shit. I, my niece was hanging out with these new friends. They fucking hung out with her for like three months just to get her to go to the fucking park so they could all make a video of them beating her ass in the park. Like, like what? what the fuck? And her parents were their video. See, I told yeah. my wife, was like, dude, I'm, if I know who these people are, I'm going to have to go to jail. Well, like, I, okay, so I'm going to talk about my stepson. Usually I only talk about him on stage in a funny way. Um, no, I'm, I'm good. good. Thank you, man. Good. Um, but what happened was he used to go to NC. <clears throat> now, I don't know if, uh, like, okay, I know you white guys let the N-word slip if you guys are singing some ludicrous, right? Or, you know what I'm saying? You hear all these little um, white kids now. That's I will they- say. DMX and DMX only. 
Right. Well, that's how they talk if to I'm each other. If I'm singing a song, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. If you didn't hey, want me, if you didn't want me to ludicrous. say it, I'm sorry, little Wayne. If you didn't want me to say it, you wouldn't say it. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> thought this was a sing along. You no, can't but, get hey. mad at me for singing no, lyrics. These bro. little white kids, they they're like, yo, what's up, N word? What's up, N word? You know what I mean? They're, that's the way they are, and mm. they'll say it to black kids too. You know, just so happened my my white stepson said it to. A half black kid, which doesn't make it any better. Okay, whatever. Yeah, but it was a mistake, right? So this guy and about 20 other fucking kids chase him down the street. There's video footage of it. Right. Uh, so they're chasing him down. 20 kids want to beat one motherfucking kid's ass. So, okay. So fast forward uh, like a month or whatever. My wife calls me and she says, yo, honey, that kid is in here at the store and he's following me and, and my son around. Oh, fuck. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, he's here with the mom and, and some other dude, but they're following us around. I said, all right. So I got in, I got in the vehicle. I drove over there. I go in the store and I see her and I'm like, all right, well I'm, I'm here. Like ain't nothing going to happen. The second we come out of the store, she starts this white, white lady. Okay. Granted her son's half black, but she starts telling my wife, she's going to beat her ass. N word. And the boy was like, hey, I'm going to beat his ass right now. I'm like, I thought you were mad at him for saying it. Yeah. Right, uh, right. Yeah. You know? And right. uh, so, like, the whole thing, I was like, hey, son, you ain't going to do nothing right now, dude. Like, and I looked at her and I said, hey, man, I'm just coming up to you, talk to you like an adult. She said, F you. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And I'm like, man, I know it's dark and I got a big nose and big lips. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if, I, if I tan out, like, I, I can look, you know, really I dark. Hear. You know what I mean? In the dark, well, I, get, I get the Mexican maybe, all the time, bro. Maybe you, shit, if maybe, I get tan, yeah, maybe people you, are like, you get oh, the yeah, mistake. Yeah. They yeah. start saying, like, gracias and shit to me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> cool, but thanks. yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I'm uh, whatever. And then there's white, red haired dude, dude. Like, he, he's with her, right? And he tells me, hey, shut up, fool. I'm a, you up, right? And I'm like, right. All right. Uh, and then he, like, he stomps at me, right? Like, I don't know if he wants me to, like, hit him. Oh, he thinks mm. you're a dog. And so, like, I took, I took yeah. off, I took off my coat because it was like December. <laughs> I remember I had a comedy, I had a comedy show that night, like not the next night. So it was cold as hell. And I, I uh, I'm like, hey, dude, like I just took off my coat and I was like, hey, like I, I want you to think about this. This isn't gonna go the way you think it's gonna go, yeah. and it's both, it's gonna end up bad. Yes, sir. And this is, uh, this is what's gonna go down right here. And he looks at me, and he, he fucking gets mad, and he fucking grabs her by the arm. He's like, bitch, get in the motherfucking car. We're leaving. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Up, Whatever. Oh, dude, and she just keeps going off, right? Before that, I didn't know it was the same lady. She had come to my house when I wasn't home, dude, and was, like, honking and trying to get my wife and my stepson to go outside. So I let her know right that then. That was here in town? Yeah, well, like, yeah, like bar oh. none, but still, yeah, oh, right? Oh, touche, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, that is a different country. But, I'm like, I'm not even <laughs> in bar none. Like, I'm in that <laughs> little space in between Casper and bar none, like the little ass crack. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Loma Linda. That's <laughs> So, like, yeah, we're right there. So, like, I told her, I said, hey, I'm just going to let you know like this. So the next time you come to my house like that unannounced, get mm -hmm. on my property now that I know you're hostile. I said, you'll be whistling Dixie through a hole in your head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Man, don't, oh, don't, don't be yeah. coming around here. Like, this is Wyoming still. Not you know today. what I mean? Not like, today. you're going to come to my yeah. home and try to, you know, try to hurt my family? Uh, and then, uh, so, like, the store owner just heard that. Like, you next time I see you, <laughs> you're going to get a hole in your head. So she calls the cops. The cops. I, I'm going to wait for the cops, whatever, dude. You know what I mean? I'm not going to run from the cops or whatever. But I just explained what was going on. They're like, well, no, you can do that. And I was like, yeah, dude, that's what I told her. And so the, <laughs> yeah. And so the, so the store owner, like 86 is bitch, right? Fast forward to a couple weeks ago, I saw her ass in student court, right? Really? And she pulled out a chair for me, dog. Like, really? yeah, yeah, I thought she was going to pull it away real quick. You know, let my fat, fat, fat ass fall on the ground, break a fucking hip or something. Oh, that would have been funny, bro. <laughs> I would have laughed. But, like, the whole thing is like, yo, but, like, seriously, that shit didn't mean nothing to you because you don't even remember who the fuck I am. Yeah. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Like, why you got to be like that? Like, well, it could, like, fuck with me back in the fucking, you know, early 2000s. Situation could have gone a lot differently. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, back then when I didn't have shit to lose. Yeah, and that's, the th I think, 
I think that's honestly the thing about these folks. A, a lot of times people forget that they don't, they let their emotions control their actions. Yeah. You know, we grew up, I mean, I don't know that we, I, I don't know how to say it nowadays because our generation is pretty fucked mm. up in a lot of ways. But mm. I was raised by a man, luckily, and a mother as well, a woman who taught me this. how to, or taught me the simple fact that, like, life's going to be fucked up, right. and the last thing you want to do is let your emotions control your actions. You know what I mean? I would, that's, you know what I'm saying? Fucking, because, like, at, cool. the story that you were just telling is that you have done, you've been a, a wild motherfucker like a lot of people have, and you're at a point where you don't let your emotions control your actions. And I, I know for myself, I'm just getting there. Right. You know? And I know that we've all been there. You know, young men especially are, are really good at letting their emotions control their actions. Well, the worst thing that, that happened to me is I went to prison, right? So, like, uh, I, I went to prison for a little bit, and then they got me in a boot camp program, right, where you do the boot camp, then you get paroled to the streets. Well, I couldn't get paroled to the streets because I had two violent felonies, right? So they paroled me to CAC, but I kept working out, dude. And the worst thing they did was let me on probation. Buff. Because, mm, <laughs> uh, mm. you know, I, my, the, the fucking worst thing was, like, anybody talked shit to me at yeah. the bar, dude. Yeah. I was drunk <laughs> enough where I was like, dude, I'm going to throw you. Yeah, I'm a real You know, like. Now. Like, I was, like, at my thinnest, dude, I'm 225, and I was cut the fuck up right. at 225. I'm just a, like, I'm just a fat fuck. But if you take away the fat fuck, there's a little bit of, little bit of muscle, you know what I mean? But they they let me out, and I was, like, and I was fucking young in my 20s, right? So I'm dumb. I do stupid shit. Yeah. I drink all the fucking time. And then you learn, right? But it's, it's like, some people learn late, some people learn early, you know what I mean? Yes, and, sir. but it seems like. Like, even even when I was a fucked up motherfucking kid, dude, and I didn't show respect to fucking, you know, like, it wasn't like I disrespected my teachers and wanted to fight my teachers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I fucking would hold a fucking kid down and fucking bully him for no reason. And the kid that I did make fun of a lot in fucking grade school, I recently fucking hooked up with that motherfucker and apologized and shit and had a couple beers with the dude. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm so glad that, that happened. Like, I'm glad I got that chance. You, you know, and, and that leads into another amazing thing is essentially y'all are sitting right next to each other. <laughs> right, right. Oh, <laughs> we're bringing this shit up right now? We can All bring right. it up. So basically, I'm, I'm going to go the easy route here. So basically, some shit happened. I was hanging out with some people I shouldn't have been hanging out with. There were weapons involved and lies being spread. Mm. Right. So what happened was, we're motherfucking G's, right? We gonna roll up, right? Yeah. Nah, I was hoping nothing would happen. I stayed in the car. But then I see this motherfucker talking shit, so I get out, and I get hit. Mm. And I just hit the first thing I could fucking hit, because I just got hit in the head with a fucking pipe, dude. I was fucking gone. And not just once, dude. I had four cracks. Like, the four, like, dude got me. Like, I just happened to put my hands up, grab it, and just look for somebody to hit. And unfortunately, that was the man on my left over here. <laughs> and uh, right, some well, shit yeah. happened. And you know what the fucked up thing <laughs> is? We worked at the same place. Did you know that? No. We worked at uh, ITC. Yeah, I was managing a fucking team and shit. Yeah, I worked at what, ITC when that shit happened. I, what's ITC? Inner telecommunications. Yeah, selling shit on the phone. Yeah, it was uh, uh, called telemarketing. Okay. I remember yeah. you talking about that job one time, Josh. Yeah, yeah so like, yeah, we worked at the same spot. I, I was really good on. at it, and I fucking ran a team and shit. But I didn't know what was going on. This fucking girl told me, she's like, hey. And I was like, what? You know, I'm like, at the same time, you're like, well, do that the whole time. I thought this was the motherfucker that hit me. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. And the, the whole time, I'm like, yo, fuck, how could I feel bad about it? He did it to me. But then we ran into each other at uh, the Y.O. PopCon fucking 
Sorry, I don't know. I don't want to talk shit, but I'm talking. It, about it was it. it was a while ago. It was like it was like the broke person's Comic Con, right? Like, uh, well, I had texted you and shit. A yeah, few you times. did. You did, but I think <laughs> yeah. I was. We did, and we called it cool over some text. We were gonna we were gonna get together. We never did though. Yeah. Well, I knew I was moving back to Wyoming. It was like, anyways. Yeah, my 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 side of shit was a little different, but I was. A little knock the fuck out, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Well, like, like I, don't I know went to were. a fucking party uh-huh. right after fucking work with a bunch of new people that I didn't know that I don't ever do that shit. It was like, oh, they invited me. I was like, all right, I'll come hang out. Yeah, I'm sitting down in the basement in this fucking place, and somebody calls this fucking chick that's sitting in there. I was like, oh, motherfuckers are over here at this place fucking with me. Dudes are trying to rape me and all this other kind of shit. So oh, damn. these people that I was with are like, we're going to go over there and fucking save this chick. I stayed at the place we were at. They all show back up with this chick. And they're like, fuck these people and fuck this. And yeah, I don't want to say names, but fucking homie. That I knew from when I was in, like, fucking second grade, lived across the street from me and shit. Comes in the door, had a fucking pistol, and fucking they proceed to beat him up and take him out into the yard hey, well, and like, kick okay. his ass. Here's the <laughs> fucked up part. Here's the fucked up part. Is I was reading the paperwork and the, the gun jammed. Right. So, like, the scary part yeah. no, I'm is saying. it fucking jammed. Yeah, no, like, that night could have gone a lot. Lo- I could have uh, been, been in prison for 25 years. Just Dude, the fucking kid I was with yeah. that jumped off the couch. Wait a minute. Dude jumped off the couch and grabbed the fucking thing from his hand, turned it around, and tried to fucking click it. And was like, oh, well, I guess we're going to have to kick his ass now. Yeah. Like, he would have been, if he would have had... Shit in there, or if it wouldn't have jammed, he'd have been done. The dude that I'm talking about. But that's anyways, what I'm saying. It's scary. They drug him outside. Yeah. They fucking started beating him up in the street and shit. And I'm like, fucking just standing there. Like, oh, what the fuck type shit. I yeah, the whole you know the whole house fucking ran out of the fucking place. Somebody came in the fucking door with a gun. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, dude. And, and let me let me be like, I so didn't know I that stood shit outside. was happen. Yeah, I stood outside and fucking, and, and that was the last thing I remember. Fuck. Yeah. So yeah, fucking crazy night. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it I was got, fun. So I was walking to fucking work right because I was like, oh fuck it, I hit him, he hit me. I didn't know what damage right. I did. I go to work the next day, dude, and fucking unmarked cars just pull me down. Mm. Like, they roll right up on me, dude, in the parking lot ITC, dude. Four or five cars get out, shotguns, guns, dude. Order me to get on the ground. Tell me to put up my hands and shit, dude. Right. Now, now I had just turned 18 years old. Oh, damn. So I had just I, turned 18. I had just turned 18 years old, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, they fucking... They, 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 yeah, so... I'm 18, dude. I get locked up, dude. And I stay in that fucking county jail. No shit. For like a year and nine months. Waiting for a deal or some shit. Right. I finally get my deal. I go to the fucking boot camp or whatever, dude. But nothing. They never, you know what I'm saying? And then teach me nothing or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, prison sucks. That taught me to like, you know, be a little more vigilant or whatever. But <laughs> as far as like calming my temper and being a fucking not piece of shit. Right. Intoxicated drunk. Right. Like yeah. I was, you know what I mean? Like I yeah. was definitely toxic. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm not saying like I'm cured, but like right. yeah, I'm no, a lot better you. person today. And yeah, that goes for everybody. Yo, most it, definitely. I, I, and I, I was the reason that shit was, uh, I was DOA. I was fucking dead when well, they fucking got there. And here's some fucking torture they do to a fucking guy. Well, you're fucking locked up, right? Like, I'm I'm locked up for my first three days because of, like, you know, quarantine shit. They, oh, yeah. They do that uh, that test on your arm or whatever. The TB oh, shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then the motherfucking investigator comes better out, dude, and they show me pictures of Josh while he's on the CNN, dude, and they tell me he's dead. Oh, fuck, dude. So at this point, dude, I'm like, Crazy, I, I, yeah. I, need, I need a fucking lawyer. 
Uh, they show they showed they, me that and they quit talking too, dude. and they quit talking to me, and the next thing I didn't I didn't like I saw my attorney maybe twice. No shit. No shit. Yeah, twice right. before fucking uh, taking a plea deal and shit. But you know what I mean. I took the plea deal because like I wasn't gonna win. They were gonna they were gonna give me something. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because they weren't gonna let me walk with with, with bullshit. You know what I mean. Right. Um, they got him. They got me. A uh, girl that was driving, they let her go. She was just driving. Like, we honestly, honestly did not know we were going. He said he had a problem with some dude. He was going to go talk to him. Alvin. Mm. Oh, sorry. Bleep that out later. Erase, erase that shit. <laughs> it was one of the chipmunk guys or whatever. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so, you know what I'm saying? And, like, you know, and I've had beef with them, too. Like, yeah. you know, snitching or whatever. And I grew I up with that motherfucker. Like, I was 18 years old, dude. They got me in a room by myself, dude. I'm scared as fuck. Tell me I killed somebody. Like, I told them exactly what was going on. Yeah. Like, I, they kept asking me, you had the gun? I'm like, I don't know who that fucking gun. I'm like, you guys told me this guy. And they're like going right. with this. So they write they write it word for word like that. But sure, sure shit, you know, paperwork spreads and people want to fucking believe other people because they're down with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So sure, like, man. it is what it is. And it, and it was what it was. You know what I mean? But like, nobody fucking. We've knows. already shook hands yeah, over we're, yeah. all, we're already good. You know what yeah. I mean? But like, as far as like. You know, other shit. Yeah, we can be good too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, it just, it's a different way of like, you know, you get fucked up. So that's what I'm saying, dude. Had I just been smoking weed, <laughs> had I just been smoking weed, I'd have been too tired to do shit. I'd have gone right. home, crashed the fuck out and went to work the next day. Right. I'm mm-hmm. not, I'm not going to lie. When I, when I smoke, I like to create. Right. It's, it's like, your, <laughs> it gives you your muse. Yeah. I can't go to sleep. I wish I could. I wish I could. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, I'm excited you guys are, are going to go to the show, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's oh, yeah. June 28th, dude. I got to get. I got to roll out of here, so I'm going to give my little spiel about, uh, uh, you know, the show this this uh, June 28th. Remember, we have uh, Ricky Ramos as your headliner. We got Joe Heisman featuring, and of course, me, Art Delgado from Delgado Entertainment hosting. Down at Sidelines, that's on English Avenue right up there uh, above Burger King. Yeah. It's over here on Poplar, so uh, definitely yep. check it out. It's going to be fun. Tickets are available right now on Eventbrite. You can definitely check it out by going to Delgado Entertainment on Facebook. Uh, and, uh, you know, anything else that has my face on it, the Shark Show face on it, you're going to hear about it there. So definitely check it out. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going for a good cause. I'm going to... I'm going to throw some of those links in the show notes that are down below. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I, I was actually, you know, I've been watching your art and stuff like that on, on TikTok and on uh, some of them you post up on Facebook, you know. And I'm watching that shit, dude, and yeah, that shit's, that shit's sick, dude. <laughs> like, it's, Thank it's, you. it's great to see people with talent in, like, individual, in in their medium. For you sure. You know what I mean? Like, like you could do a hundred other things, but this is your your passion. Yeah. And that's that's the way I feel about stand-up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I that's think the way I feel yeah. about podcasts. Right? You're yeah. just talking and letting people know what's up, dude. Like this is just me. Do you agree? Do you not agree? Tell me why, man. Yeah. We're not we're not fixed. We're not rigid. I I think I well, you know how we were talking about like getting older type shit yeah. and, and whatnot. I man, for like the past like year or so or what have you, you know what I mean? I always try to plug everything on the social media. Yeah. And I get disappointed when, you know what I mean? Because like, I don't, well, shit, like I would say, like when COVID and all that shit was going on, you know what I mean? Put my motherfucking camera up and fucking, you know what I mean? This, that, the other. And then you got to go and you fucking, you know, and go post it. And then in the morning, yeah, in the morning, it's like, oh, shit. Well, a you couple know, the, likes or whatever, and the, then I get disappointed. The whole thing is you can't but, get discouraged because you know what? You're not doing it for likes. A, yeah, exactly. It's this and fucking that's, like that's that's the whole the like the YouTube shit, like the stand up comedy. Um, of course, I'm doing the stand up comedy for likes, right? Like I want oh, you to think I'm shit. funny, <laughs> but but at the same time, dude, I'm just getting up there and doing like what I like. It's therapeutic mm-hmm. for me because mm-hmm. like some oh, of yeah. it's real life and some of it is like you know exaggerated real life. Yeah, but you know you yes, do sir. you do you do what you can and like that stuff takes you out of it. And if you like to do something, then you'll do it and you'll do it. You'll want to do it really, really good. And that's 
that's the best thing about it. Yeah, and that's kind of what I, what I like. I'm starting to grasp. You know what I mean? Not essentially like fuck social media all in the you know in a sense. It's more of like, you know, what? I don't really care anymore. Right. Like so, I believe. Ooh, I'm gonna plug some shit real quick. I believe uh, my painting. It is still up at the Nicolaisen Art. Heck yeah, dude! I've got Museum. a membership there for a year. Uh, I got second place at the for woo, the woo. thing, and I it, it was another one of those things where I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna do it and for I, you. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, man. I just been stuck in. Uh, I don't know if facade is the right word because right. I don't even know what the fuck the definition of that. Well, but that's it like a cover. Right, yeah, yeah, of like I, I don't know, man. Well, I totally get that. You know what I mean? Like, people ask me if when I'm on stage, that's, if I'm doing a character. Mm. <clears throat> and then, I mean, you guys know me. That's not a character. That's mm. that's me. Mm. Right. You know what I mean? I'm, it, right. I do stand up like I'm telling a story to my best friend. I'm going to laugh his ass off. Ooh. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, you just reminded me of something. <clears throat> I do yeah. have a question for you. Yes, sir. I apologize if I asked it to you the first time you were on. Uh, what was the worst heckler you've ever had? Oh, okay. So I was actually uh, doing a set in Cheyenne, right? Um, uh, and I was uh, I was going on, and uh, I was doing some Mexican jokes, and I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I'm Mexican. You can tell by the accent. See. <laughs> 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 You know, ya sabes, wey. Aquí estamos cotorreando con todo, ya sabes, oyendo la palabra. Vamos a estar. Pinche, that's funny. Yeah, fuck it, bro. <laughs> but no, uh, like every once in a while, dude, if I'm doing like a crowd and bunch in front of Mexicans and shit like that, or like Native Americans, I'll go to this one, you know, I'll be like, no, you guys know what I mean? Like, I'll go to that right there, because for some reason, I like it a lot more. And I I think that the Caucasians feel more comfortable around me speaking in my normal voice because this, <laughs> this is my normal voice. Like I said, I grew up here, so, you know, right. I don't know about the accent. But, like, no, uh, so I'm doing a set and I'm doing my Mexican jokes and there's this tables of ladies right in the front row. And it turns out it's a divorce party. Oh, Ooh. damn. So okay. they're, <laughs> they're hating me anyway because I'm not good looking and I don't give a fuck about them. Right. It, so okay, not not that it matters, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But what kind of divorce party was it? Was it a female or a male? No, yeah, it was a no. Well, yeah, it was a female. Okay, so yeah, but, there's no, lots of hate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It was it was it was like a table of like twelve females. Okay, and I focused on that, and there was uh, two college couples, like directly Sweet. right in front of me, who Hell weren't yeah. who weren't appreciating any of my fucking. On PC fucking material, they didn't the appreciate you know the story that I was telling, the punchline they weren't laughing right, so I tell this joke about being Mexican. I said ah, I'm sorry, ma'am. I said I'm, I'm you might not know this, but I'm Mexican, <laughs> right? And I show her my neck tattoo. I don't know if anybody has ever seen me. I have a Echo in Mexico tattoo on my neck, right? Which means yeah. made in Mexico, but I was born in the USA, greatest country in the world. Uh, Is it but, though? Yeah. This yes. is the best time to be alive ever, bro. Ever. Are you hungry? Yeah, touche. You know what I'm saying? Are you got to go out and kill something? Is your wife safe right now? That's what I'm saying. This is the best time to live ever. But uh, so I'm telling these jokes and I tell her I'm Mexican. And she goes, barely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and the whole time I'm telling my jokes, I'm like, man, nah, you know, they're talking shit, dude. And I'm like, just digging in, dude. I'm like, fuck this. I'm doing my jokes. What I found out is I lost track of the rest of the room. Uh, because I was focusing on these college couples and this big ass fucking divorce party, right? Uh, Trying to make them laugh. So I get off, dude, and I think I bombed. You know, I get off stage and I'm sitting there backstage and I'm having a beer and and everybody's coming up, dude. My buddy who who runs the show, shout out to Brant Tobler. Um, he uh, was like, dude, that was a great set, man. You did fucking, um, that was awesome, man. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. I just, uh, you know, I tell him, like, the fucking divorce party. He's like, oh, dude, you can't focus on them because that's only fucking 10% of the crowd. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying, yeah. dude? Like, who cares if they're in the front? That doesn't make it more important. Right. And I was like, oh, all right, all right. 
you know, but that's my feedback. Hell yeah. So that's all I could see off the lights and stuff like that, you know? But I, I, but as I sat there, dude, I go out to the bar and I'm drinking, you know, while the other comics are performing and I got people coming up to me, dude. They're like, when you coming back, bro, that shit was hilarious, bro. When you, you know what I mean? Shit, like, yeah, man. You know, I got a lot of positive feedback that way, you know, where you get a pat on the back by people that enjoyed your comedy, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I'm, and like, granted, I got the spot because he's my bro, but. These guys are from Denver, dude. And these Denver guys, they do, like, I do an open mic maybe for a month, dude, because I got to drive down there, get down shit, and then in between oh. I'll have some shows and shit, right? That's or, and, or I do open mics here, dude, but I don't have that fucking gym where I can work out every day. So these guys are punching and working out every day, you know what I mean? Yep. So for, like, other people to come up and say that, and then, like, you know, my colleagues and stuff like that say you're good set, oh, you know? Yeah. It brought me back, and it made me realize, dude, you're right, dude. You know, that 90% of the crowd is rocking it out. Or there's, there's 10% of bitches in the front row are digging it. You know what I mean? And that's what it is. Some people go to shit like that, dude, and they don't want to laugh, dude. They want to they, they want to talk. They want to be the center of attention. It's yeah. like, yo, yo, yo. Not tonight. Yeah. Like, you, later on when you and your friends drink and tell mm-hmm. this funny story. Yeah. Right now, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, these people yeah. paid to hear some shit. Don't mm-hmm. fuck it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, unless I ask oh, yeah. you a question, shut the fuck yeah. up. <laughs> and that, that that's probably every comedian to you in the world. I'm sure. Have you? And then here's a funny story, Don. Don. So we're doing a show at uh, Diesel's right before it was Diesel's. It was, or was it always Diesel's? Mm. It was something it's else. Been right? A lot of different things. But we were down in the basement doing a show. And this guy is just heckling him. And Don goes, dude, will you shut the fuck up? Yeah, I was he goes, uh, yeah, he goes, dude, fuck you. You'll fucking never, you'll never fucking work in this town. And Don's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> right? And this guy goes, fuck you. Good luck getting paid. Don's like, this is a free show, dipshit. <laughs> right. Like, so then they start scuffling. <laughs> we got to break them apart. And it turns out the dude is like the fucking... Husband of the bar owner, one of the partners or something like that. Oh, that's a good dude. Here. So, yeah, dude, since then, dude, they and even though they're under new management, dude, I have not been able to talk that dude into shit. Yeah. And, uh, like, I've left messages and shit like that, and it's like, dude, like, Delgado Entertainment sells out, dude, like. Yeah, no, that was, yeah. But that I just have people. Yeah, I just haven't been back, man. So, but, yeah, I've noticed that. Uh, that's probably the worst shit I've ever had. It's like, you know, uh, in, th- <laughs> I was in Fort Collins doing a show, dude. And, uh, the, the guy that's put on the show, he goes up, he's hosting and he goes up and he does a couple jokes and they, they bomb, dude. You could tell he just wasn't right. in the mood to tell comedy. So he, when nobody laughs, he tells them the reason why he wasn't so funny that night. <clears throat> he starts going into real shit and he tells, uh, the crowd that, he just recently had to have his mother like committed mm. and that his like sister started doing drugs again, left him with the kids and shit like that. Like some fucked up shit. Right. And right. the crowd's like, Oh, you know, and he's like, but you know, I'm trying to do better and everybody's clapping. Right. And he's like, all right, your next comedian coming up to the stage, Art Delgado. So this, this guy just brought everybody fucking like, right. All right? <laughs> so, and I'm only doing 10 minutes, dude. So my first five minutes, we're trying to get these motherfuckers back on track, having a good time. Right. For you sure. know what I mean? Uh, like that's the, that's the, when people don't want to laugh anymore, that's the hardest you got to work. Cause you're up there, you know, you're just doing it. You're winging it. You're trying to get yeah. it. And, um, you know, yeah, I've got the written material, but now I'm, I've got to go a little off track. Cause like, now I'm going to do this material because this is the mood there. And, you know, it's kind of like mm. a yeah. like a science. You pick your colors with your paintings and, yeah. you know what I mean, and what's going to go with what. And I do the same thing with jokes where I've got 100 jokes. I'm going to pick these to go in succession right here. Right. And to maybe fit, to you fit were, your people to you know, maybe fit the crowd. Maybe write a call back or, you know what I mean, talk some shit or whatever. <clears throat> but when you only right. got 10 minutes, fuck. Yeah. So those are the worst, worst experiences. Oh, I'm sure. Haters, yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say haters. I'd say those those chicks in fucking Cheyenne definitely were haters. And you know what's fucked up, dude? Is they were like all half Mexican. But yeah, yeah, dude. You know their daddy went out for smokes and never came back. Doing fucking seven in Rikers. 
But no, I want to thank you guys for having me on here, man. This is a great cause. Definitely the WAP comedy show, June 28th. Tickets yeah, are $15. Yeah. Check it uh, out. You can get them at uh, go to DelgadoEntertainment.com. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the real shark show.com. Uh, you can go to uh, the shark, the real shark show on TikTok. Uh, definitely the shark show on YouTube. Uh, check it out. Of course, Shark Delgado on Facebook. I'm always, you know, not really doing a lot of shit, but I'll, I'll, I'm like a troll. <laughs> <laughs> like, people don't understand. You can't post nothing <laughs> and not let me have Google because I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> Hell yeah. But thank you guys so much, man. I appreciate hey, it. Hey, you are sure. very welcome, as always. We appreciate your time, my man. All day, man. Yeah, this is fun as hell, dude. That's what I like to do is talk shit. Uh, woo, woo. Let's see. We truly appreciate everybody that tuned in on the Facebook Live that has us in your ear invading it. In your eye holes. Mm-hmm. Another another week, another episode. God damn. We love you. I'm Stevie V. I'm out of here. Ready like Friday Josh, night spaghetti. No spaghetti here, though. Jake had to go. You're tuned into that three-wheel bicycle. Po- <laughs> yeah, there it goes. <laughs> oh, wait. Here, let's go to this one. Hit one of them. Hello. Oh, uh, try hey, with me. That one. Hey, this is Del Dub. Nope. One. Pink. Yeah, it's. it's Hi, y'all. Nope. Have you? There. There we go. <laughs> Maybe Perfect. we'll see what happens <laughs> if there's either or. We love each and every one of you for throwing us in your ear another week. I'm Stevie V. I'm out of here. Josh and, and Art. That's it. That's all I got. It's- Click them links down below. Share it up with your friend, your homeboy, the neighbor, squirrel, whatever kind of wildlife you have in your backyard. Yeah. Three wheel bicycle coming out of Casper, Wyoming. Got a buffalo. That was fun, dudes.